Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up those football gods. Wake up here, guys. All right, today, guys, we got a special treat for you. This is our pilot of CPCP. Cowboys point counterpoint and this is going to be kind of a regular thing where we're taking something that's going on with the Dallas Cowboys and there's always something going on with the Dallas Cowboys and we're going to look at it from both ends of the spectrum and try and figure out what is going to be the best way or better yet for you to make your own mind up deciding what will be the best solution for the Dallas Cowboys. Now of course the big topic right now is the Dallas Cowboys got rid of Mike Nolan on Friday. They literally went in and said, you're fired. You're out of here. You're kicked to the curb. Bring your playbook. Bring your pass key. Get stepping, boy. And now he is completely gone and out of here. And like magic, already we've already hired Dan Quinn. A lot of Dallas Cowboy fans out there are up in arms, but, you know, one of those great uh, Twitter persons out there said that, you know, it doesn't matter who the Cowboys hire. Cowboy fans are going to be mad because, well, let's face it, Cowboys fans are vicious. Yeah. Um, so the question we have is, is Dan Quinn, is that a good hire? And I want to welcome to our pilot show here tonight, my man, DMV. DMV, how you doing, man? Man, I'm, I'm ecstatic, man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me, man. Are you as ecstatic about the Dan Quinn hire as well? Uh. It's growing on me, but I will say that, you know, I had to sleep on it. You know, it, it was a tough pill to swallow at first, but, you know, I'm, I, you know, I have to be happy with it, you know, have to be happy with it. You don't have to be happy with it because, you know, we got Cowboy fans that will be complaining for the next nine months through the season and 10 years from now. You remember when Jerry Jones hired Dan Quinn? That was the <laughs> dumbest thing that they ever did. So, well, I so, will say that happens a lot, though, Mark. Okay. <laughs> so the question is, is. Um, with the Dan ha Dan Quinn thing, I, I was here listening from my, Miss Jackie and stuff, and and from other people, and they were saying, you know, the Cowboys they rushed the process, uh, they didn't take the time, you know, this is a retread, you know, what are the Cowboys doing? Um, your thoughts on that again? I do think we rushed it a bit, uh, maybe you know, we maybe by a couple of days or so. Like I, I do think that we could have interviewed a couple of more candidates, or maybe. Um, you know, maybe interview uh, one or two guys from current playoff teams, like w w position coaches or something like that. But I, I mean, you know, I do understand why they had to get on with it quick. Um, being the, being with how you have to install things and get things ready to go. But in my opinion, um, one or two more candidates couldn't have, couldn't have hurt this process. Um, who would you like to see in here instead of him? For example, I mean, you know, as we're saying, you know, who would you have liked to have seen them interview and at least take a flyer on? Uh, you know, um, I'm not quite sure because we, we talked about Marvin Lewis, but, you know, um, I'm not sure if he wanted a defensive coordinator position or not. You know, I, I do know that Wade Phillips was interested, even though he, he's a little older. Um, I know he was interested. I would have liked to see them interview him. Uh, I do like that they, they interviewed George Edwards. Um but, you know, there are position coaches, there's some young talent in this league that, you know, people won't give chances. So I would have liked to have seen maybe somebody we haven't heard uh, get an opportunity to interview for. And you never know, they might have wowed your socks. I mean, think about the Steelers and Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin, when he got that job as a young coach, mm -hmm. he, 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 it didn't seem like he would have gotten that job. But the way he wowed them and with his football knowledge and how, how to be able to, you know, manage a team and things of that nature, he was prepared for that interview. He wowed their socks off to the, to the point that, you know, he got that job and won them a Super Bowl. So I'm not about necessarily following trends. I'm about creating your own and whatever feels right, feels right. And this feels like what we've been doing the last however long we've had a good defense. Well... Okay, I hear what you're saying on that one. I think in Cowboys' minds, um, I think the biggest negative is Atlanta for him. Okay, yeah. Uh, to me, at least, I think that's because everybody is like, man, that guy is a bum. <laughs> you know, they got to the Super Bowl, 
and they lost. You know, they were up twenty-eight to three, and they lost. Okay, they they blew the lead. You know, he couldn't do a damn thing with the defense. You know, he, he's a bum. Now, now, what do you think about that? Do you think that there's validity to that argument? I mean, the one thing that I told you yesterday when we talked, I mean, the one thing that I told you when I was upset about it was that, you know, well, while he wasn't necessarily heading the defense, he was overseeing everything that was going on. And if you're a defensive guy, how do you allow your defense to struggle? How do you not poke your head in? You have to share some of that responsibility, right? Yeah, you do. But you know what? Let me, let me say for Cowboy fans right now, let, let me say this to you guys that are saying he's a bum because he got to the Super Bowl and they choked. <laughs> let me say this again. He got to the Super Bowl and they choked. <sighs> Have we gotten past, you know, one playoff game win? No, we haven't. We haven't. In, I mean, in 25. So, wait, you're telling me he got to the Super Bowl and he won. Excuse me. He got to the Super Bowl and they choked. Uh, okay, all right, I, I get this. Now, I will say he took an Atlanta Falcon team, yeah, he did. which is not a team that you look at and say they're a juggernaut. They're a team that's challenging for championships because he took over for a team, Mike White, who was kind of like the Cowboys. They make the playoffs every couple of years. They lose in the first round. Matty Ice, you know, they should have they, they should have treated him like they treated Tony Romo. You know, they called Tony Roma a choke artist. The Cowboys came to – that was the Atlanta Falcons. He took the talent that was there and got them to elevate where they got into the Super Bowl at least. I will say that they at least did that much. You, you, you're telling me that he doesn't get any credit for doing that? Well, I, I do believe he deserves some credit, but, you know, similar to how we do Gruden for, for Tony Dungy's team, he was – he might have just been there when the team was ready to take the next step or – you know, if we're going back to if we're going back to the Seattle days, maybe we don't say he t you can give him total credit because the GM did a hell of a job bringing in guys. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think that you'll find out some things when he's in Dallas because Dallas doesn't operate the same as everywhere else. So but I mean, does he deserve some credit for getting Atlanta? I mean, Atlanta, I mean, this is for brethren, but yeah, I mean, Atlanta hasn't been known for busting squat, so he's got to get something. Uh, okay, see, so, see now, now you brought up Seattle. You brought up Seattle, where he was defensive coordinator, mm -hmm. 2013, 2014, okay? During that time, that defense, that defense that had, what, two high draft pick, drafted players on the defense? Yeah. Was number one in 2013 at points, giving up 231 points. Mm -hmm. They were number one in yardage. They were number one with 39 takeaways. 30, 39! That is like two and a half Woo. takeaways a game. Okay? Mm -hmm. And went to two Super Bowls, winning one, and they, the one that they lost wasn't their fault. Yeah, that was it, but, but. on the offense, Pete Carroll. Yeah, defense got their stop, yeah. Now, now, some Cowboy fans out there said, well, that was Pete Carroll that was running. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That wasn't Pete Carroll. Mm -hmm. Pete that was Carroll's him. the that offensive was guy. Because there was a rift between the defense and the offense because Pete Carroll fucked that up. Yeah, Excuse he did. Excuse my language, but yeah, he, he messed did. that up. How you don't run beast mode in the end zone, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But that defense of theirs, since they've left, steadily went downhill because for three years in a row, that defense was number one. Then they went to fifth, and then I think they went to thirteenth, and now they're ass. Yeah. So you look at him leaving him and Chris Richard, they steadily got worse. Now some of that might be the talent, but the thing I look at is um, the thing that sold me because at first I was like you were. I was like I don't know about this. This seems like it's really quick, and you know Dan Quinn. Okay, yeah, he was part of the Legion of Doom. Maybe he was just lucky right there. But then I started thinking about. He's been to three Super Bowls mm -hmm. since 2013. Yeah. Okay? As a defensive coordinator and as a head coach. I can't say we've done that in the last 25 years. But I, I saw this clip um, last night. I, hopefully I got it right this morning. But it, it spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to play this real quick. And, and I, and, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Because I, I don't think you've heard all of this. Okay. Because you would think that 
he was literally talking about the anti-cowboys. Main things we want to do is let's play it our style. And uh, we did that tonight. That was one of the things going in uh, all year long. We're fast, we're physical, and uh, we have a real style about how we play. How about that came out tonight? Push. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Uh, couldn't be more uh, proud to be part of that unit that, that plays, you know, with an aggressive style. We talk about out hitting people in terms of how we want to affect the quarterback and even checking the ball down the way we want to tackle. Uh, we wanted to win with fundamentals. And uh, you know, our guys work really hard in that fashion. Uh, it's something that our coaching staff and the players, you know, we talk tackling, we talk turnovers really every day that we practice. And uh, you know, that's the thing that What are you going to you? Well, we certainly have uh, you know, so much respect for their offense the way they did. So I was not surprised that we played well. Uh, we've had terrific weeks of practice and preparation. So going into it, we were healthy and really felt like we were going to play fast and physical. We, we prepared for no huddle for two weeks. And uh, to give those group of guys two weeks to prepare, uh, the coaches and those players, I think we're going to like the results. What did you tell your players after the game? Really just how proud I was to be part of the unit. and. Uh, the thing that I was most impressed about is that we really played in a style and fashion that we're accustomed to. We're fast, we're physical, we played this game on our terms. And that was one of the things we went into the game saying, and for us to go and play it in that way, uh, you know, and have it come true in that way, it was awesome. Where do the Seahawks land the old time greatest defense? I'll let you guys decide that. I you know, couldn't be more fired up to be part of our unit and the attitude and the way that we play. So I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. Coach Carroll has been, uh, he's been huge for my career. I think just um, how to feature the players and uh, let's find what a player can do well and let's accent that. And uh, that would be one of the main things he's talking about. What did that first Okay, so uh, that's enough of, of the interview. You guys can watch the whole thing on there. But do you notice how many times he said fast and physical? And I think maybe maybe Jerry Jones the crew. Now, the, the, what I have to say at least is this is not a Mike McCarthy guy. He's not related to Mike McCarthy, so they went away from hiring his buddies. Good, good. Okay, good. But he preached fast and physical. They talk about fundamental winning with fundamentals, and we talk about. Um, taking the ball away, that we talk about this every day and they work on it. And you saw that happening with their team. That team, you know, they were brutal. When, when a receiver comes off the line, they're challenging them. They're knocking them off the block. You, you know how many times you and I have talked about our team literally uh, giving up eight and ten yard cushions and letting the receivers go wherever they want to go? Yeah, we talk about that all the time. I, I'm, I'm, and when you talk about fundamentals, I've seen Jalen Smith's tackle. You know, Jalen Smith kind of grab a, grabs a hold and just hangs on for dear life. And I keep seeing players that literally stop and wait for the running back to make a move and just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to attacking the person. They're absorbing all the punishment. They're taking all the hits. Or Xavier Woods, and if I could ever get Xavier Woods image of him lead blocking for Washington where he's literally running down the field and and, and he can't locate where the running back is uh -huh. that, that he uh, he looks like a lead blocker and I'm kind of like what are you teaching these guys well I agree with what you're saying and I, I, I absolutely love what he said the only thing that that I find you know that I can you know talk talk against in this is you look at him right here. He's young. He's wide-eyed. He's hungry. He hadn't gone through any disappointment. Uh, he's he's a hungry coach here because this was, what, six years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's a long time in football years because the game is constantly evolving. Uh, teams have created schemes and off They've had six off-seasons to learn how to beat that scheme. So, if I mean, technically we've been chasing, trying to duplicate what Seattle's been doing for quite a while, and it hasn't worked. Now, I guess getting the defensive coordinator for, for that time might make sense here, but it's six years removed from that. We can't guarantee. I mean, there's no guarantees in football anyway, but, I mean, that was six years ago. Things are different, and in Dallas, things are different. You know, he had hungry guys in Seattle. Can we duplicate hungry guys in Dallas? We've well, tried it. Okay, all right. Well, well, here's my thought. Here's my thought. Part of the reason why this works for me is 
you've got basically four three personnel mm -hmm. for the most part. Now we've got a lot of guys that are free agents um, that that are, that are going to need to be replaced. But you look at our personnel, we're four three. You know, part of Mike Nolan's problem was is what the hell were we? <laughs> Every week we were you know we're, we're you know we're we're a three four four three we're hybrid you know and and to me you know you see you know D Law standing up sometimes you see his hand in the dirt he hasn't played with his hand in the dirt for years. And that whole transition of we're just going to be a chameleon, we're going to match up with every offense that's yeah. out there was too much. Give me somebody that's going to say, okay, we're going to be a 4-3 defense, okay? And we can take the personnel that we have for the most part and try to make them aggressive. To me, Rod Marnelli is like me. He's an old guy who, when you get old, you don't take chances. It was bend, don't break. Well, that was good that you didn't give up a lot of the big plays, but you were slowly getting killed on the running game and mm -hmm. short passes and stuff, and you didn't get the takeaways. To me, this team needs to be aggressive. It needs to start trying to get the ball because if the last season taught me more than anything else is you know that the turnovers were the reason why we started winning. People yeah. can say it was Andy Dalton started playing really good and, and everything else, and we don't need Dak. No. For once, we got 12, we got 12 takeaways in the last four games. Now, I'm going to say, what they did in Seattle, without having, you know, going every year with a number one pick that's a defender, they had very few guys on there. What they had was they had a great rotation of defensive linemen. Mm -hmm. Nobody was a Khalil Mack. They got guys like Cliff Avril from uh, the Detroit Lions, you know. They ended up getting um, uh, Michael Bennett. He was an undrafted free agent, undrafted by the way. Undrafted free agent and made him a beast. And they had a rotation of guys that they could keep sending wave after wave after wave. And you could look at a Tristan Hill. You could look at a Gallimore, and those are that type of guys. So you take those. You take your D-Law. You take your Randy Gregory, who should be benefiting from finally having an off season and a training camp. And all of a sudden, you've got pieces of what they had in Seattle. I'm not expecting them to be the Legion of Boom. Where oh, no, no, no. Number yeah. one in, in taking away the football, number one in points, number one. I would love to have that. But we don't have to be that with the offense that we have. Here's the thing that's crazy is, you know, everybody talks about Russell Wilson, best quarterback and everything out there. But when they were winning Super Bowls, Russell Wilson was only getting like 3,200 yards passing and like 22 touchdown passes. They had a great running game with beast mode, and they had a defense that was taking the ball away and giving them short fields. And that needs to be the recipe for the Dallas Cowboys. You can't just go through and say, we're just going to outscore everybody. At some point, especially late in the season, you need a competent defense. Now, I've heard people say, you know, well, we should have checked out Marvin Lewis. Well, if you're going to nick him for what happened to Atlanta, how many Super Bowls did Marvin Lewis go to? As a coach? As a coach. As what? a head coach. None as a head coach. None. And None. you could look at his time with Cincinnati, be it another franchise that's not a winning franchise. You know, the first few years they went to the playoffs and Andy Dalton and them lost in the first round. So yeah. I can't say that necessarily that that's going to be better than what you get with him. Now, while that's true, you never know until you actually sit down with somebody to see exactly what they know or what they can get somebody else to know. But they did sit down with him. No, who, who Marvin? As a, deep, as a as a defensive oh, coordinator a, or a head coach? That's, a head coach yeah, that's, that's different. You still kind of you still getting the feel for his personality and what his vision. Well, right? I mean, it, it's a little bit different, I would think, if you're interviewing for a defensive coordinator position than a head coach. Head coach, you're kind of laying out what your whole program is or whatever. Defense, you can kind of focus on one area. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? You don't have to yeah. worry about talking about how I'm going to staff here and there. It's, it's a, you got a good point on that one, but um, I think that this, if, if there's anything that makes me happier or, or makes me at least feel good about this is instead of waiting for a team that's still playing. Yeah. You know, you could be, if it's a team that's in the Super Bowl and you're waiting for that coach, you're talking about in February before you actually get a chance to talk to him, and you're not sure if you can get that guy. To me, time is of the essence with this team because to me – 21 season is already starting no you, you're absolutely right and that's a valid point and that, that that's one great thing about this is that you could take he, he can go ahead to the senior bowl look at the senior bowl people and help start right. evaluating people mm -hmm. my only issue my biggest issue with this mark is 
where we talk about um, retreads because I know that that's something that a lot of fans, including myself, I'm, I'm not huge on retreads, but when I looked at the trends, I was a little bit more comfortable. Of the eleven of, of the fourteen playoff teams, eleven, there's been eleven head coach retreads as defensive coordinators, and three wow. of them, and three of them were hired uh, within. But for me, I'm I'm more so. I really like the three where they were hired within because. I'm going to ask, we've had four defensive coordinators in 10 years, which is a lot. So it makes me trust whether or not they can evaluate coaches to come in here. And then every time you switch defensive coordinators, not hiring within, not keeping the continuity, we don't have an identity. We don't have a way of developing players. And then players get caught in the shuffle and we're in the same thing. We're in the same cycle each time. Yeah, but see, here's the other side of this that um – when you talk about having four defensive coordinators, um, I hate to keep talking about Jalen Smith, who's the Dallas mm-hmm. Cowboys man of the year. He does so much good off the field and stuff. But I'll I, talk I, about I, it. We're talking football okay, now. Okay, but but on the field, I'm sorry, he played like ass. You you can and people, <laughs> come, people come at me and say, but he led the team in tackles. Yeah, but he also was tied for uh, the most penalties at linebacker at ten. Um, and also, how many times do you see him making contact and being carried five yards down the field? How many times do you see him out there celebrating and, and it's been a bad play for our defense? The guy's gotten downfield 15 yards and you're doing a swipe. And you're the same guy who's saying that the defensive scheme is too complex. If it's too complex, then why aren't you giving it complete attention, complete attention, and making sure your play is the thing that's going on instead of having that perfect swipe? And part of the problem for the defensive coach is when you see a player who is underperforming and the owner turns around and says he's a cornerstone of the found of the comp- of, of the team. I, I agree. Um, I think that that's a question we have to figure out if Dan Quinn, because he looks like a football guy. So I really love the hire because of that. He seems like a really straightforward football, no nonsense type of guy. Mm-hmm. Can he deal with an upstairs that feels like they have to meddle in? everything and maybe undermine you sometimes to the media i think he's a low-key type of a guy yeah okay? he's not looking for the limelight and see as opposed to because people will say well why didn't we get rob ryan you know I, we, we had uh, i mean rex ryan i'm like we had rob in here you know another loud mouth you know uh, trash tra- straight garbage okay <laughs> it's like i don't want another rob in here uh you know ryan in here because you get somebody like that, that's a guy who's looking to make a name for himself to launch that head coaching career again and everything else. And I think that would be more of a problem dealing with the Jerry Joneses and things like that. I think he, to me, he seems more low key. I, to and me, he I, and seems I like, like that. a guy who's not looking to have a press conference every week and tout what he's doing. I think he's the kind of guy that, you know, he's going to let his defense do the talking. And quite frankly, I almost look at this as a no lose situation. Uh, can you really be any worse than than where we were? You can't. The only thing I worry about is is this a long term solution? Because while we talked about Marvin Lewis a little bit earlier, the one thing that that I do love about Marvin Lewis, Marvin Lewis, uh, Tony Dungy, guys like that who are really great coaches, who mm-hmm. are great coordinators, they develop coaches around them. Can Dan Quinn do that? And moving forward, if Dan Quinn is gone, do you know will there be a coach that steps up that we can develop? Because then we'll be in another cycle where we're trying to find somebody else, and then we're switching schemes again. And that's what I worry about. Because I mean, I've been abused four defense coordinators in ten years. They've been trying to fix the problem by trying to hire instead of really develop. Yeah, but you know, p- part of that was the hiring process, though. I mean, Monty Kiffin. They hired a name. Let, let's be clear. I'm, they hired a name when they hired Monty Kiffin. They were thinking about the Tampa 2 and what they did. Monty Kiffin's defense had passed him by, you know, and so then they passed the torch on to Rod Marnelli. Rod Marnelli, to me, was in the same situation that we look at him and say he was a failure at head coach. There's some guys that are great coordinators mm-hmm. but aren't good head coaches. There's some guys that are great position coaches that aren't great coordinators. And Rod Marnelli, you cannot argue with what he was able to do with defensive linemen. 
I always, what I had hoped when they hired Chris Richard was Rod Marnelli with his bad hip was just going to focus in on the defensive line. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that these guys can get, are, are going to be able to eat out there and mm -hmm. let Chris Richard try and bring in the magic of uh, that aggressive style of defense. But that's not what they did. Chris Richard was, he was just a straight assistant. It was still kind of Rod Marnelli's, I'm going to bend and don't break defense. Yeah. And Chris Richard was kind of thrown under the bus. So he never really got to implement the things that he did well with Seattle. So that, I, I'm sorry, Monty Kiffin, I mean, I, I, they, they basically took him into the front office, and I think he just, you know, evaporated into the ether or something. <laughs> you never heard anything more about it. And it was like, okay, well, we're going to hire from within. We got Rod Marnelli. We're going to make it. And Rod did a decent job with them. They got better every year. Yeah, they did. But it was still an old scheme. And, you know, we looked at it. You know, they're making the calls 10 seconds before the play's going off. They're not challenging receivers. There was nothing that was – outstanding about the defense other than he was able to take guys like David Irving and actually make them really good pass rushers. Agreed. So I can't look and say that, you know, we've had great coordinators in the last 10 years and we just screwed it up. True. To me, but they've also I, I got to say he's got a better pedigree than what we've had here before. He does, Mark, but think about this, right? Because we talked about this pre pre-show. Jerry has his favorites. And even if they're not necessarily the best on the field, they're cornerstones, as you put it. Mm -hmm. And those are what these defensive coordinators have to deal with. Dan Quinn's going to have to deal with some cornerstones out there that just flat out can't cut it. Uh, well, okay, well, there's two. <laughs> there's D-Law and there's Jalen Smith. I mean, other, I mean, and it's really the only one. Well, D-Law can cut it. D-Law okay, can, can, can cut it. I'm just saying there's only two cornerstones out there on the defense. That defense got to be rebuilt. You, you, a defensive line, you're talking about, you got Tristan Hill really under contract. I'd say he makes it. i say, of course, Gallimore is going to make it because, you know, he's a rookie. He's going to get some more beef on him, I think, this offseason. And, and if he can they better continue, make Ran They better make Randy a cornerstone. Okay. Well, and Randy Gregory, he's under contract, of course, and he looks like the real deal. you got D-Law. Other than that, uh, and Darren Armstrong maybe, uh -huh. uh, other than that, that, that's it on the defensive line. Linebackers, we've got Jalen and we've got Van Der Esch and uh, Bernard, right? That, 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 that's all we got linebackers right now. So we need more linebackers. We absolutely do. Okay? And, and cornerbacks, we've got Diggs and we got Anthony Brown. I, you know, maybe you bring back a Jordan Lewis or a Woozy. I'm not bringing back Xavier Woods. One of those guys got to come back, yeah, not both. One, back, one but, but not both. And none of them are prima donna. And um, safety, Darian Thompson. That, that's it. So No, Donovan Wilson. I mean, Donovan Wilson, excuse me, um, at safety. So you're looking at us needing well, that's a it. lot of players on that defense. Well, so you can get the guys. Mm -hmm. This is where it's good for him. Yeah, it is. I, he, okay. gets to, he gets to pick his groceries, I, I, yeah. It's a clean sweep because, you know, as Doc Walker always said, if, uh, you know, if I can lose with you, I can lose without you. Uh-huh. I can lose without you. So now you can go through the draft, and, and I think this is where they need to be free agency and stop this bargain basement yeah. shit in free agency. Go. Get yourself a good safety. I know you were talking about some of the safeties that are available out there uh -huh. um, as free agents. So it's, we're, I'm, and we're running out of time here. But uh, briefly, some of the safeties – that are, are possible free agents that are that could fit the bill because you're going to need a free safety in there that's a ball hawk. Yeah, so uh, Justin Simmons uh, out of Denver, uh, he's going to be a free agent. Uh, Anthony Harris out of uh, Minnesota. I'm not sure if Anthony Harris is more of a center fielder or not. Uh, Marcus May uh, from the Jets, he, he's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But here's a name that I, I threw out there today, and they ha he had quite a bit of success with him. You might not like this one. Earl Thomas is out there. Okay. <laughs> Earl Thomas is out there. The story that will never die. It won't. It, it okay. surely it surely won't. And especially since you signed essentially since you signed Dan Quinn, you you had to know that that story was going to have legs. Well, also cornerback wise, there's Richard Sherman that'll be a free agent probably too. I'm good on that. Yeah, and you know, I think we can find corners, but you know, okay. it, it's really hard to find center field safeties that and you got a guy out there who is a little bit older, but he understands what you want to do. Okay, so you're bringing back the Earl Thomas talk. I am going to bring back the Earl Thomas talk. All right, so here's where we are then, guys. 
we can be stewing for the next nine months uh, about this situation. Um, I think it actually fits at least with the players that we have. Um, and, and we're at a point where we're trying to rebuild. Uh, it fits kind of the system that I think we want to run. And I think with the timing of this, because we're already in mid-January, you need to decide, are any of the players that you have on the roster, like an Alden Smith, are these guys that we're going to need for this defense? And you got to start making your mind up if we're going to be trying to get some people that fit the system in free agency. And as much as we're sitting here thinking this is the offseason, it really ain't. And I'm going to give you your final take on why it may not work. It may not work because the system, the process has been the same. So until they prove us otherwise, this organization, this culture, I'm going to have to stay guarded in this one. And I have to just see see what it, what it looks like. Um, hopefully it works. But all I got to go by is how I've been abused in the past as a fan. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Cowboys make you drink, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so um, th that's my argument there. You know, um, you got to show me. The Cowboys have to show me why this is a good hire. Until then, I'm not going to be super ecstatic about it. All right. So I want to thank my man. DMV Dallas Cowboys. Uh, he's going to be part of our show on a regular basis. He's actually doing film breakdown of uh, potential draft picks. Uh, who did you drop out today? Uh, Rashawn Slater, tackle from Northwestern. Really good tape, man. Go Guys, go check it out. Okay, all right. And he's definitely going to be looking at some of the prospects that we need to be going after on this team. Um, I appreciate you guys taking a look at this. The Dallas Cowboys, uh, excuse me, uh, Cowboys point counterpoint. It's it's so new I can't even get it right. <laughs> but um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Drop a comment in here and you know, let us know what you did like about it, what you didn't like about it, uh, and so forth. And give us ideas of things that you would like us to discuss. And this was brought to you by Bam Media. Bam broke ass media. <laughs> and with that being said, we got to get out of here. Call it a night, the party is over, and tomorrow and next year starts the same old thing again.